Hello, everyone, and welcome to St. John's Virtual Church. Morning prayer, right one. Let us pray. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults, Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto humankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and, and to the, the Son, Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. How shall a young person cleanse their way by keeping to your words? With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in your statutes. With my lips will I recite all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your decrees than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your words. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband says the Lord. 
But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Let us say together the song of Simeon. Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In today's Gospel, we hear about these Greeks that come and say something to Philip and some of the other disciples. They make this statement, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. I think most preachers could preach on that phrase for the rest of their career. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. There are so many angles that we could look at this statement from, but I propose two. One, our expectations, that we are these Greeks that come to the disciples and say, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. What are our expectations that we bring week by week, day by day to our walk with God as we desire to see the Christ, to experience Jesus? What are our expectations? Realistic expectations, but also ones that aren't so realistic. But I think that is one angle that we can look at this and kind of work on looking into ourselves and what is it we wish to see. And then there's another angle that I'd like to spend a little more time on. 
is that people come to us, to the church, to this community of St. John's, saying that same thing. We wish to see Jesus. And the question I have for myself and for you is, what are we showing them? As people move into this wondering, especially during this year when we've had so much time, so much time to reflect and wonder and question what it means to be a church, what it means to be a place that primary job is to show the world Jesus, to be Jesus' hands and feet in the world. It's interesting because so often in history, church has been set up as this thing, that this institution that has all the answers. And that all you need to do is come and sign on the dotted line, say a few creeds, say a few prayers, and you get the golden ticket. And yet, if you look at the life and ministry of Jesus, that's not really what he talks about. He talks about love. Loving God with all that we have and loving our neighbor as ourself. He talks about mercy. How we care for the least, the lost, and the last. Not only out there, but even within our own selves. And forgiveness. 70 times 7, which is basically a pretty infinite number. It's not just 490. So this love, mercy, and forgiveness, how are we showing this to the world? I have to say that I got kind of frustrated this week um, when I read some of the news reports coming out of the Vatican about its inability to bless same-sex unions or marriages. And it took me back to a conversation I had in my first year in the priesthood almost 20 years ago. And it was with Susie Wolf and Holmes Wolf. Susie, devout Episcopalian, she was an archivist at Calvary Episcopal Church in Shadyside, which is a suburb of Pittsburgh, where I was curate. And she invited me over for lunch and her husband, a devout Roman Catholic, Holmes, about 80 years old, and I was about 30. And I walked into their home and they're just lovely, good people. And 20 years ago, the issue of human sexuality um, within the church, especially within the Diocese of Pittsburgh, was a hot topic, to say the least. And I can remember sitting down at their table, and Holmes looked at me with this way that he could look at me. Such a kind man, but sharp as a tack, and definitely um, did not suffer, fool, suffer fools gladly. And he said, so what do you think about this blessing of same-sex marriages or unions? Oh, wow, what a loaded question. Well, in the rabbinic tradition, I learned that questions answered with questions by time. And so I said, I don't know, what do you think? And he laughed, he laughed this gusto because here's this devout Roman Catholic that I wasn't sure where or how I knew him, but I didn't know him that well. And he said something to me in such a whimsical, kind of open way that it changed me. Not necessarily my opinion, because I shared his opinion, but it changed me and what we show one another. And he said, well, Rob, I find it difficult to understand that the church will bless just about anything. Yes, we bless man and wife, you know, you know husband and wife, but we also bless animals, we'll bless boats, we'll bless motorcycles, we'll bless inanimate objects, we'll bless just about anything. But when it comes to two people in love, we suddenly have to put on the brakes. Wow. I saw Jesus that day, incarnate in Holmes and Susie in their hospitality. They shared with me this openness to understanding that maybe God's way is bigger than us. 
Maybe that this understanding of blessing, which he went on to talk about, the understanding that comes from our Jewish ancestors is not that we do anything magic with our hands once we're ordained. When we bless, we are simply pointing out where God already is. This understanding of blessing is such a broad understanding, so much bigger than this idea of magic fingers and that somehow it is just for a few, but rather it is for all of creation to bless, to point out where we see Jesus, where we see love, mercy, and forgiveness. So as we ponder what it means to be church in the year 2021, as we wrestle with the issues of the day, whether it be human sexuality, gender, whatever, race, these are all really important issues. Let us remember to look at it through the lens of Jesus's life through the lens of love, and mercy, and forgiveness. This idea of showing each other Jesus. And beautifully said in a sermon that I remember and keep giving to you over and over, is that where have you seen Jesus this week? Who was Jesus to you? Like Holmes was Jesus to me that day. We wish to see Jesus. What are we expecting to see? And what are we showing to others? May we have courage to let our reflection of God's love, mercy, and forgiveness that resides in us shine brightly to the world. And let us resist the temptation to have the answers, but rather to welcome the questions, to welcome the conversations, to open the doors so that all people can see Jesus. Amen. Let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee. And we worship thy name forever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us. As our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Let us pray. 
O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinners, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest, and desire thou which thou dost promise, that so among the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us, unite us in bonds of love, and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is another day, O Lord. I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If I am to stand up, help me to stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. If I am to lie low, help me to do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, let me do it gallantly. Make these words more than words and give me the spirit of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Your intercessions and thanksgivings are invited at this time. This day we lift up Betty Adams, who has gone to be with God. Please pray for her and for her family. Rest eternal grant to Betty, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Welcome again, everyone, to St. John's Virtual Church. We are so grateful that wherever, whenever, and however you are joining us, that you are with us. We are better for your presence. Now Nathan's going to share with you some things that are coming up today and next week. This evening at five o'clock is the next in our Lenten series, Guides in the Wilderness, Journeying with the Saints Through Lent. Our own Steve Falsi is going to be presenting on St. Ignatius, the Jesuit tradition, and praying with the Ignatian examine. It should be a great look at another saint and another set of prayer practices. So I invite you to join us at 5 p.m. on Zoom for that. The link is in your e-news. And you can also find all recordings of each of the prior sessions on our the St. John's website. And please stick around after that and join us for a YouTube live stream service of Compline at 6.30. It's hard to believe that we're back here once again, but next week is Palm Sunday. Please join us for virtual church and for the blessing of the palms. But we're also inviting you to come and celebrate Palm Sunday 
in person with us. We were offering a drive-through Palm Sunday procession. Um, just please come stop by the lower parking lot between 12 and 1, and we're going to be giving out those blessed palms along with a series of other prayers and, and items to help you accompany you in your journey through Holy Week. Think of it as a sort of Holy Week in a box. So please come by 12 to 1 next Sunday for palms and for Holy Week in a box. Thanks, Nathan. One thing that I would like to say is that your prayers matter so much. This week, Betty Adams, dear Betty Adams, died and went to be with God. And I am so sad for me, and I'm so glad for her. But I would ask that you keep the whole Adams family in your prayers. Rest eternal grant to Betty, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given, given us grace, grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, be amongst you and with all those you love and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Eternal light shine.